hosting that tonight to talk about all the implications here as we all try to answer some of the real questions out there. This is the topic of conversation on Wall Street, and we're going to tackle uh, the biggest of, of the questions out there right now because, as we said, there are so many. We wanted to focus in on two. One, how did Bernie Madoff do it? And two, his fund dealt with a very rich crowd of sophisticated investors. Could something like this be happening to, to regular funds and to your money? Here now to answer is Tom Gorman, chair of the SEC Litigation Practice Group, also former senior counsel with the SEC Enforcement Division. Mr. Gorman, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to you. So the, the first question, how in the world did he do this? Uh, a lot of people have bought into his uh, own allegations that, that he had said when he was arrested that he did it alone. I found that hard to believe. What do you think? I, I find that hard to believe also. The, the basic scheme here seems to be pretty straightforward. It appears that what Bernie Madoff did was he continued to solicit more and more and more money, and then when people wanted to cash out, he used the money that was coming in to cash out the other people, which made it look like it was a legitimate kind of an investment fund, and it made people feel comfortable. But this is reportedly a years-long operation. It involved billions of dollars. Reportedly, Bernie was doing hundreds and thousands of securities trades, month in, month out, year after year, getting money in from all over the world, making all these securities trades, printing out statements. It's hard to imagine that all of that could have been done by one man sitting off by himself, which is the portrait that seems to be emerging at the moment. I think the real question going forward is, who else was implicated and who else was involved and who helped Bernie Madoff do this? Right. And the other question, of course, sounds like from what you're saying is that it was a Ponzi scheme, but obviously some, a lot of these trades, I mean, you had people managing this money. Who knows which of them knew or didn't, but there were some trades going on. So at some point, they probably did make money and people actually got paid out real money, right? We, I mean, we really had no sense of scale here. No, it's hard to get a real sense of scale. The, the, the original reports talked about $50 billion. Uh, the reports this morning were talking about $20 billion. But whichever one of the numbers you're talking about, you're talking about billions of dollars, and you're talking about hundreds and hundreds and perhaps thousands of securities trades over a time period that's not clear, but it appears to have gone on for years. This fund has been in existence, we know, since mm -hmm. at least the early 1990s when the SEC first ran into it. So. It's been around a long time. It's very unusual for one of these Ponzi schemes to last that long, simply because right. of what they are. Right. So, okay. So, answer to question number one: How did he do it? You're saying not exactly clear. I mean, the regular definition of Ponzi scheme, but perhaps most important, he did it most likely with help from others. We need to find out who. And the second question: The sophisticated investors, some of the most wealthy and sophisticated investors out there. Mort Zuckerman is going to be our guest to talk about this in a few moments. Um, could this be happening to regular funds that regular people have their investments in? I mean, Bernie Madoff dealt with the wealthier side of the world. Yes, it really could. And that's one of the, one of the perhaps real tragedies and one of the scariest things here, I think, for everybody. The market confidence is already probably at an all-time low. And now you have a man who was a pillar of Wall Street someone who sold people based on his reputation for integrity turns out to be a fraud and the people that he took in as you indicated are very sophisticated investors they're wealthy people there's a lot of financial institutions not only in this country but around the world who also got taken in so if mm -hmm. you're the average investor a real critical question is is what can i do here and i think there's really a couple things that average investors ought to right. look at one they ought to look at they have to be active. It's not enough to rely on just the SEC or the markets. You have to be an active investor. Ask the, ask the people that you're investing with, how are you doing it? Here the reports were that Bernie Madoff had a black box. Right. You hear that, you should be cautious about what you're doing. Number two, look at the returns over time. Be skeptical. If they're too good to be true. They probably are. They probably are. And that's All exactly right. what happened here. Well, Tom Gorman, thank you very much. We appreciate your taking the time and answering those two questions. And as we have promised you, coming up at half past the hour, real estate mogul Mort Zuckerman, chairman.